140 miles north of Buenos Aires is the city of San Nicolás. Since 1983, it has been known as the City of Mary. This is the most recent church-approved apparition site in the world. Each year, two million pilgrims travel here to pray at the sanctuary built at the very location Mary requested. Throughout Argentina, thousands of prayer groups have formed as a result, and many physical healings have been reported. For Bob Feeney, a Catholic author who has dedicated his life to spreading Marian devotion, it is a place of unique inspiration. Until now, this apparition and Mary's message of hope have not spread far beyond the confines of Argentina. But now, thanks to Bob's travels and new book on the subject, the veil has been lifted on Our Lady of the Rosary of San Nicolás. Today is September 25th, and it's an anniversary of when Mary first appeared to a woman named Gladys de Mota, who lives right here. And Mary appeared to her from September 25th, 1983 to February 11th, 1990, with 1,804 messages that had been approved by the Catholic Church. And Jesus appeared to this woman 68 times. His messages have also been approved. Each year, on September 25th, hundreds of thousands travel here to show their devotion to Our Lady of the Rosary. In her messages, Mary continually implores all to keep hope alive. She calls hope a wealth from God. Mary's sanctuary in San Nicolás is a site renowned for repentance and conversion, for messages that call us to a meditative praying of the rosary, and for its appeal to the young. La procesión, sobre todo de los 25, aquí es emocionante. No hay palabras. Así que la, la procesión tiene un enorme, un enorme significado. Lo que pasa es que es un poco la vida. La procesión es la vida, ¿no? Este, ya que esta vida es una peregrinación. Y bueno, es como peregrinar con María, es caminar junto con ella. Son más de 60 kilómetros donde la gente camina y lo hace con sol, con lluvia, con frío, con calor. Y entonces uno se pregunta de dónde sale esa fuerza, cuál es la motivación. Y evidentemente la respuesta la encontramos en la fe. Ahí jóvenes que dejan todo para venir a ver a la Virgen, que buscan, en definitiva, el, el, el sentido de la vida y, bueno, María quiere, quiere regalárselos el sentido de la vida, ¿no? En realidad te cambia, te cambia la vida. Es como difícil explicar un magnetismo muy especial que uno siente por este lugar. Eh, uno, para uno ya es su casa uno, y y uno realmente tiene en algún momento de su vida una confirmación personal de la presencia de la Madre aquí. On October 7, 1983, the feast of Our Lady of the Rosary, Mary appeared to Gladys de Mota. Mary was holding the child Jesus. Together, they held a large rosary in their hands. Mary's image faded, and a chapel appeared. Gladys understood this to mean that Mary wanted a sanctuary to be built. After rigorous investigation and discernment, Bishop Domingo Castaña is convinced of Gladys's authenticity. He laid the foundation stone on September 25, 1986, the third anniversary of Mary's first visit to Gladys. Yo creo que la gente, los santuarios son los grandes pulmones de la fe, yo diría, ¿no? Donde la gente viene a respirar su fe auténtica, ¿no? Este, y viene a acercarse a Dios. Esto es fundamental, ¿no? Es una cosa que yo procuraba 
eh, inculcar a través de mi predicación durante esos 10 años que estuve en San Nicolás de los Arroyos. Este, todo esto es para conducirlos, la Virgen, para conducirlos por el camino de la fe a Jesucristo y a la Iglesia. A unique aspect of this Marian apparition is Mary's frequent invitation to read Holy Scripture. With only a fourth grade education, Gladys lacked deep knowledge of the Bible or theology. Yet in her messages, there are more than 200 scripture references. Her messages encourage us to apply scripture to our everyday lives. Entonces, Biblia y Tradición, dos grandes, las dos grandes este, columnas, digamos, del, donde el, se, se cimenta la fe católica. Pero las revelaciones privadas tienen la función de ayudarnos a despertar, a tomar conciencia de que la revelación, la Palabra de Dios existe y que tenemos que conocerla. Y curiosamente, acá en San Nicolás se ha dado algo muy importante. Fue, creo que fue, me parece, la, la primera, el primer lugar donde apareció esto, las citas bíblicas. Eh, que es lo que la Virgen quiere, llevarnos a Jesús, llevarnos a su Palabra, ¿eh? convertir nuestra vida por la vida sacramental en el seno de la Iglesia. Eh, es muy, muy completo. El... I was just so anxious to come to see Mary's house. And she always said, I want to invite my children to come here and pray. I read in the, in the messages that Mary encouraged us when we come here to go to the statue and look in her eyes and contemplate her eyes and see in her eyes her great love for you. And I guarantee you, if you come here and look at that statue upstairs, and you look in her eyes, you know that she has this great love for you. I found myself having a hard time talking. It's like I was getting hoarse, and I was struggling. So I was told to go to a, a specialist, and he looked at me and said, you are textbook Shrogan syndrome. What in the world is that? And what happens is the white blood cell, instead of protecting you against infection, it goes on the wrong path and it starts destroying your organs. And because they can affect your muscle cells and you have to keep moving or they get atrophy, I walk three to four hours every day, even though it's a struggle. But I force myself to do the walking and uh, I pray the rosary during those hours. I know God wants to unite me to his cross and for me to experience Mary at my side and whispering in my ear, keep on keeping on, Bobby. I'm at your side. There's nothing to worry about. It's amazing how Mary worked in my life. I was drafted during the, the worst time in the Vietnam crisis, the Tet Offensive. And I said, I got to learn how to pray. Because if you watch television, you see all these 19-year-old boys coming back in body bags. And I said, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to learn to pray the rosary. Then I got my assignment, and uh, it was to Vietnam to enter into a, a search and destroy unit. We were in armored personnel carriers, and they held about six guys in there. And on one day, in 1968, the Vietnamese communists were waiting for us. They set up a barrage of gunfire, grenades, RPGs. And uh, I got knocked off the APC carrier on the ground, and all the other guys in the APC carrier were killed, except my Polish-American friend. I had shrapnel from my ankle all the way up to my chest, and I was literally in a pool of blood. And I knew I was dying. Instinctively, I said, in a low voice, I said, Mary, please help me. And my friend heard that, and he came over and did everything he needed to do to prevent me from bleeding to death. 
And even though the communists were still firing at us, he dragged me back 50 yards and called in a helicopter and medevaced me to Saigon for surgery. Bob Feeney eventually fully recuperated from his wounds, but he never got over the feeling of gratitude to Mary for saving his life. He became a teacher and coach, dedicating much of his time to writing and teaching others about Mary and the power of the rosary. His best-selling book on the rosary, The Little Summa, caught the attention of Pope John Paul II and earned Bob a meeting with the Holy Father. John Paul II was very, very cordial and polite welcoming us, and uh, I, I gave him my book. And he seemed to be very touched. He, he's talked about the rosary in America. And uh, to be honest, what he said to me, I just knew I have to do something to spread the rosary in America. Hay infinidad de mensajes sobre la oración. Como dice ella, la oración aclara la mente, fortalece el espíritu, es el arma contra el enemigo, el arma poderosa. Particularmente le da al rosario le da un particular poder. ¿no? Este, la oración es la fuerza que el Señor nos regala. Y bueno, ella lo que pide es que se lo rece eh, sin apuro fervorosamente meditando lo que estamos orando. Throughout the whole apparition of San Nicholas, Mary's constantly mentioning the rosary. So that is the devotion that the world should gravitate toward and to pray it properly as John Paul II taught us in his apostolic letter on the rosary. And I have to admit, it's the greatest document I've ever read in my entire life. Now, if you go through that document, these are steps that he said can be taken to make the rosary more of a contemplative prayer. To start with, you do a meditation on the uh, mysteries of the rosary from the New Testament. And John Paul II said that you could use a picture to help place yourself at the event. But then after you do the meditation, you then are quiet and you reflect on that mystery. And then he said, when you say the name Jesus, insert a clause that relates to the mystery. Because when you insert the clause, you're centering in on the name Jesus. See, then John Paul encouraged us to ask for a virtue that's shown there in the mystery. And then at the end of the prayer, if you're saying it in public, you don't say the glory be, you sing it to emphasize the Trinity being the destiny of human life and our deepest longing. And uh, John Paul II said that this method will help people pray the rosary m more in a contemplative fashion. La gente iba allá a confesarse y a comenzar una vida cristiana, una, una vida cristiana, muchos de ellos sabemos. Yo creo que es el síntoma más claro de que es de Dios una cosa, ¿no? Cuando la gente se acerca, decide cambiar su vida a través de una buena confesión, acercarse a la Eucaristía y comenzar una vida distinta, nueva, ¿no? 
eh, a partir de entonces. Eso, 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 eso es un poco la característica, es como el signo de autenticidad de, este, de estos fenómenos. Como rector del santuario es experimentar a través de la gracia de la reconciliación eh, la transformación del corazón, el acercamiento, el cambiar de vida. ¿no? Eh, mucha gente se acerca y dice, padre, la primera vez que, que me confieso, ¿no? o, o hace mucho que no me confieso, fui a la Virgen y acá estoy. Yo digo, esas son las mejores eh, confesiones, ¿no? porque María toca eh, el corazón de esa persona, que es la célula eh, de esa persona, y lo transforma, eh, este, lo ayuda eh, a empezar a renovar. No es mágico, sino lo ayuda a empezar a renovar su vida de fe. Yo creo que eh, ella está apuntando a un renacer eh, de la fe en un contexto mundial de secularización. La esperanza a la cual ella hace referencia es la posibilidad de que en la humanidad tengamos nuevamente como centro al Señor. On December 12, 1983, Mary called for a special novena and promised a special grace to all who recite it. She stated that I want this novena known all over the world, and I want people to respect my request that everyone recite it. Father, deliver us from all evil. With your holy wisdom, Lord, Save us from sin. In the name of all those who love you, Lord, lead us on the road, amen. And she stressed here that, uh, that the intention for this novena should be that God have mercy on the whole world and that the whole world should respond to his call for conversion. La consagración mariana es la mayor expresión del culto a la Virgen y la, la, la seguridad y la certeza de que con María todo lo podemos. Ella nos va a llevar a Jesús. Entonces, entregarle eh, la entrega total en su corazón de madre, el abandono de nuestras vidas en, su, en sus manos, con una inmensa confianza de que ella nos va a llevar con toda seguridad al puerto que deseamos llegar. There is a prayer that she specifically mentioned uh, as a way of consecrating yourself to her mother's heart. This prayer was given by Mary on August 10th, 1986. May God grant me the grace of living for you, of loving your heart with all my being. And may you, mother of mine, be the one to cleanse my soul and purify it. Most beloved mother, Teach me to love Jesus. Make me worthy of Jesus and of you, Mother. And may this day's consecration unite me even more to you and to your Son. Amen. No approved apparitions in the history of the Catholic Church focus on the young, as do the messages of Our Lady of San Nicolás. Our Lady stresses that youth are being pulled further and further from God through rampant sin, materialism, and consumerism. Mary expresses her hurt at the many who reject her voice, and she warns the world that her heart must be embraced to hold off the justice of God. Yet, ultimately, Mary's messages insist 
we are not abandoned to this current reality. She has given us the tools to redirect our souls to God through her motherly heart. And the ultimate tool is the rosary. Este santuario y, y realmente Nuestra Señora del Rosario nos ofrece eso, el rosario, esa oración tan maravillosa que nos permite acercarnos a, 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 a su camino, a su andar. Y los jóvenes que están en este mundo apabullados por el consumismo, por el hedonismo, por la búsqueda de soluciones fáciles en una vida sumamente inmaterial, están tentados de mil maneras, estamos atravesando un tiempo de tentaciones permanente, ¿no es cierto? María nos llama, a, 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 nos recuerda que existe un camino diferente y ella, como madre que sufre ¿eh? al ver que sus hijos se apartan del camino correcto, trata de, de, de recuperarnos. Here we are. Uh, right in front of Gladys de Mocha's house. And you notice a lot of young people are here. And in Mary's messages to young people, she says, enter into my heart, enter into my heart. How do you do that? John Paul II said, you enter into Mary's house by praying the rosary, praying the rosary with meditation on the mystery. And so we, we look to the young people as being the hope of the Catholic Church the hope of the world, and my prayer is the young people will lead the crusade uh, for the rosary to bring peace in the world. Now this here, San Nicholas, is the beginning of the triumph of Mary's Immaculate Heart. So we have to have hope, and as I've always said, you got to keep on keeping hope. Viva, Viva la rosary! The French theologian René Laurentin said that um, we are living in the time of the apocalypse now, and Mary is a woman clothed with the sun. When Mary first appeared on September 25th, 1983, it's reported that a priest stated that this San Nicholas is the beginning of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And at Fatima, Mary did say, in the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph and there'll be an air of peace. Tenemos que la Santa María se está gestando hoy en pleno combate. ¿Eh? Eh, la Virgen en Fátima anuncia todo lo que estamos viviendo hoy. Y en San Nicolás estamos ya descubriendo y viviendo todo aquello que fue anunciado. Por eso María cuando presenta la esperanza de este mundo es Cristo y lo renueva y lo vuelve a renovar, ¿no? y siempre es actual ese mensaje de María. ¿Por qué? Porque el mundo siempre ¿eh? está en peligro de perder la esperanza, de perder de su óptica a la persona de Jesús, que es la esperanza de los pueblos. Eso es fundamental. ¿no? Entonces, por eso aparece muy frecuentemente eh, en las diversas manifestaciones de María, en los acontecimientos de este tipo, aparece ese mensaje eh, subyacente en todo. ¿no? ¿Eh? La esperanza es Cristo, señores. En Jesús' final mensaje en San Nicolás, he said, Today, my mother is the ark. It is through her that souls will be saved because she will lead them to me. The image here is of Noah's Ark. Tenemos este, en la historia de la salvación del Antiguo Testamento, se refugió, primero Noé construyó el arca, salió a, a navegar y comienza el diluvio. Pero los que estaban en el arca se salvaron. María dice que su corazón es como esa arca, ¿no? Si nosotros nos consagramos a ella, le entregamos nuestra vida, 
eh, María se convierte en arca de salvación para todos nosotros en medio de las dificultades, tribulaciones y vicisitudes de la vida. Nos quiere guardar en su corazón como guardó Noé a su familia en el arca. I just hope and pray that people will come to know what Mary said here in San Nicolas about the mother's heart because Mary kept saying here, you are entering a new day. Look at the sunrise, a new hope. So there's every reason to be hopeful, but we need to do what she asked us to, to hand ourselves over to her mother's heart, to experience her love. So I encourage anyone, don't hesitate, come down here. Mary's offering you an open invitation to come.